Although they look similar, there is something totally different about these two sets of screw assemblies. The first one seems to advance forward, as you would think it should intuitively, with a full stroke of the traveling nut. The other nut advances very slowly from a similar threaded input screw, traveling only a short distance. This idea has been in my head for a few years after first seeing it in the chapter of an ingenious mechanism book. The chapter was called Differential Motion, where they give two different versions of the screw as you saw at the beginning of the video. Having a 3D printer and the capability to make one of these now, I had to try it. I went to some of my normal download sites to search. Thingiverse didn't really have anything related, but they did give me two pages of recommendations. So I checked printables, which had no suggestions, to my surprise. Maybe it was my search terms? I don't know. But I did find something I might have to print later on. Bruh. Since I was unable to find anything as a quick download and print, I resorted to my own 3D modeling. As I modeled up a concept in SolidWorks of what a normal screw would behave like. Then I did the differential motion screw concept. After applying some screw mates to the model, I got the assembly to behave on the screen as a normal 3 quarter 10 screw would. With 10 threads per inch, every 10 turns of the screw advances the traveling nut by 1 inch. Let's speed this up a bit. I applied the same screw mate, actually two screw mates, to the differential motion assembly. The SolidWorks model behaved as I thought it should, so it's time to print. But before that, I'd like to point out that all the models I designed have been put onto my printables and Thingiverse pages. So if you like what you see, or maybe you just don't believe this can happen, feel free to download the model yourself to print. And check out the other videos on my YouTube channel. And if you like this video, comment and tell me why you liked it. It helps me, seriously. It's time for an epic time-lapse segment of the five pieces required for the normal screw assembly. All of these time lapses are done with a stack up of photos from each layer taken on my GoPro 10. The photos are each mechanically triggered by the printing head through a custom Cura time lapse setting and GoPro wireless remote. If you want more information on how these time lapses are done, please leave a message for me in the comment section. But it's time to pull the prints and get this first one together. And honestly, I find it kind of amazing that you can print true to life screws that function in the real world. Now this one is pretty straightforward. I don't know of many people that don't know how a screw works, but it's one of those things I feel like I have to show for comparison purposes. And hey, if you've never seen a screw working, then this is your chance. Assembly of this one is relatively simple as well. Insert the traveling nut into the base with the hex side inward. Mine is a little tight, but I think the screw will give enough mechanical advantage not to matter. Then slide the end piece into position. Now this demo didn't need the end stop for the purpose of the video, but I thought I might be able to use this as a handheld clamp sometime down the road. Maybe if I work it back and forth a little bit, it'll break some of the printing burrs. As I said before, it's awesome being able to print functional, true-to-life screws. I think it opens up a doorway to some amazing 3D printing possibilities. Let's get this one installed. There are two holes for pins on either side of the screw to allow rotation of the screw within the nut and also allow the screw to pull backwards on the nut when necessary. Now I wanted these pins to be a slight press so they wouldn't fall out during use, but it looks like my printer had other ideas for me. Let's get out a small hammer to drive them in. Maybe something a little bit smaller. That should do. Now to give it a quick test just to make sure it has a decent range of operation. It's looking good. Now I just have to get over the pin that I broke with the hammer. But all in all, everything's okay. I think it's safe to move on to the differential motion assembly. This one has a lot of similar looking parts. The base assembly is slightly longer to allow room for the second screw. The traveling nut just has one hole in it for a single pin to hold the second screw in position. It's the same end stop for both assemblies, a single pin, and to make the differential motion work, a slightly smaller screw was added with a finer thread pitch. And the main 3 quarter 10 screw now has a half 13 female thread in the end for the second screw. Let's get these prints pulled so we can put everything together. Mm -hmm. 
So now this one assembles similar but different. It's still pretty easy though. Start off by threading the larger 3 quarter 10 screw into the base. Then before sliding the traveling nut into place, insert the smaller half 13 screw into the end of the larger screw. Once in place, the traveling nut can be slid into the base guides. Make sure to line up the pinhole in the small screw's hexagon head with the pinhole in the traveling nut. Now obviously I couldn't wait until it was fully assembled to give it a quick try. And I'm not going to lie, this is pretty amazing. Not only does it work as intended, to be honest it feels a little bit weird on my engineering brain. Let's finish it up by putting the end piece in position. This one went in place way easier than the first one. Now for the final piece, a single pin to hold it together when reversing the screws. This one pushed a little bit further into position with my hands, but still going to need a little bit of persuasion. And there you have it, the differential motion assembly is complete, from concept to reality. There's something quite eerie about this, from two coarse thread screws, one at 10 threads per inch and one at 13 threads per inch, I'm able to achieve the equivalent of having a roughly 43 threads per inch screw. Something like this could be used for fine machinery adjustments or high clamp forces. I don't plan on doing much with it myself, I just wanted to see it in action. As I mentioned before, if you want to try this one out for yourself and hurt your own brain, you can always go to Sanford Prime on Credibles or Thingiverse to download for free. I'd like to demo this one a little bit, maybe give a better understanding of what is actually happening. To speed it up, I requested some help from a drill motor. I added a piece of tape to the socket to help with counting rotations, and as you can see it's a lot less straining on the finger muscles. Quick example of the standard 3 quarter 10 screw in action with the drill motor. I think it's going to make a nice handheld clamp later on for future projects. It can also be used for a simple press for pins so I don't have to drive them in with a hammer. Yeah, I'm still getting over the broken pin. For an equal comparison, here's a quick example of how the differential motion assembly works with the drill motor. As you can see, it has a much different stroke. I want to measure what is going on by taking the initial measurement of the traveling nut position and counting the rotations of the input screw. Knowing that the screw was 10 threads per inch, I have an expectation that with 10 turns the traveling nut should move by 1 inch. I started with a quarter inch, and now it measures 1 and a quarter inch, so everything's as expected so far. I'm going to measure the differential motion assembly a little different. I've left it gapped from the end by about a quarter of an inch, and I'm going to see how many turns it takes to close it completely. It looks like it took about 12 turns for that quarter inch of trap. Working this out mathematically, it should have been closer to 11 turns, but hey, I'm measuring this with a 6 inch scale, so I guess I'm not being too critical at this point. And I guess the concept here is the big picture. Both of these screws are coarse thread. Each one on its own has a much larger pitch dimension than what we're seeing here. But when combined, they can behave much differently. When the large screw advances forward by a distance of its pitch dimension, the small screw actually retracts by a distance of its pitch dimension. The sum of these two, one positive and one negative, are what make up the net pitch dimension of the assembly. I've put together a quick chart showing American Standard coarse screws. But this concept could be used on any combination of screw pitches, whether coarse, fine, English, or metric. Here you can see where this assembly falls in the chart, with a 3 quarter 10 external thread and a half 13 internal thread. The forward advancement calculates 2.023 inches of forward advancement per input revolution. 